Mr. Mugabe, I want to ask you to start. Yes. Do you believe rightfully that you should still be the president of Zimbabwe? No. I, I don't believe I should, I, should, I should be. I believe the person who should take, who should come after me, should be properly, properly elected. But you believe, that is all. But you believe that... And I will, you, ass I will assist you. You, are, you believe that your removal was what? Illegal? Yes, uh, my removal was forced. I, I had to resign in order to save the situation and uh, the people who, are, who, who were advised me were say, if you don't resign, there's going to be bloodshed. There's going to be bloodshed, please. Did and, you and some of them were religious guys, so I said, fine, I will resign. Did you resign because you feared for the safety of your own family? No, for the safety. My family, even now, is safe. I, it's, it was the safety of the people. But there were gunshots fired here. Your wife was yes. alone here. Yes, yes. There were gun fired, but uh, that's it. Uh, but um, no, on, the, on the whole, uh, we, we are safer than the, the rest of the people. Yeah. So you believe that the new president of Zimbabwe is in his job illegally? Yes, I believe that. Why and are you saying that? Oh, because he wasn't elected. <laughs> Who elected him? He is an imposition of the army. And we are saying, let's get that position corrected. What do you think of Mr. Manangagwa? Here is a man who describes you as a father. Yes. What kind of son has he been to you? <laughs> of course, uh, sons will not always uh, be obedient once to, to the father. Uh, he is, he's got his own views. He has got his own character. And it's a character I perhaps did not quite see and know about him, uh, that of not forgiving. If a person stepped onto his, you know, shoe on his toe, he will go after him. Do you think he's betrayed you? In that regard, yes. He has betrayed you. He has betrayed you. And in not wanting to be democratic, he has betrayed the whole nation, our whole nation. We are topsy-turvy. You know, we used to be the pride, not just of Zimbabwe, but of our region, Sadiq. But we are not that anymore. We are a disgrace to ourselves a disgrace to our community, sadly, a disgrace to Africa. Why did we do this? Just for the glory of an individual? When I was here in November, mm -hmm. there were large crowds cheering on the streets. They wanted you to go. Yes. Do you accept that, that your departure from office was greeted by many, many millions of Zimbabweans as a good thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, you say the millions, there were not millions. In the ground of Harare, we have a country with about 15 million people. Now, what happened in Harare did not happen elsewhere. These were noises that were well organized. You had the... Uh, um, the opposition, the opposition took a greater part uh, in, the, in that uh, in the demonstration. When you watched it, what were you thinking? I, I didn't watch it. I was told about it. 
Yes, but you don't move on the basis of noises made. It doesn't matter how strong those noises are. It is your party and the party program. Yes, take note of the complaints. Take note of the complaints and bring them to your, into your system, into your party. Because you know what people say? They yes. say that for whatever good that you did in liberating this country, mm. people say that over the course of your rule, this country has been ruined by your leadership. What do you say to that? Ah, ruined. Ruined, of course, no. If anything, and there is, uh, in comparison to other countries in Africa, there is greater prosperity here. And uh, people have their land. They won't starve in this country, which other countries, in other countries, happens. So there's 90% unemployment, the health service That's is falling apart, the even the education Now, it's out. only now doing that. Education, we, we are the model here, you see. And, and what, a, what about the human rights abuses that so many people uh, Yes, have we have been accused of that. And on that side, yes, then some errors were done. Uh, they continue to be done, human rights. That's a very difficult area. I agree. We we offended uh, uh, in regard to the to, to that area. Is that in terms Quite of the election? In violence? terms, no. I think it is more in relation to how we handled uh, other people, the opposition, etc., etc. The, the violence towards you. The violence, yes. You see, what people will say is that you were in charge for 37 years for the errors that were made, for the problems that Zimbabwe has now, there can really be only one person to blame, and that is Robert Mugabe. No, just one person. Now can you say one person? One person was leading a party, and the party had its own program. But we, we, aren't that, we weren't that bad in comparison to other countries. No. Zanu PF said the problem was not with Robert Mugabe, but with Robert Mugabe's wife, that you wanted Grace Mugabe to be the next president. Ah, but that's nonsense. And anyone who becomes president must be a member of the party. She wasn't. And must also be processed within this party system. And that, that is said, of course, by, by those who would want to find fault with me. And uh, some, some the, terrible stories were told about uh, uh, your wife, that she tried to poison Emerson Manangatwa. Ah, uh, no. But he regretted later. He said, no, it was not our, our dairy uh, products which had poisoned him. He was poisoned on the, on the plane. That's what he said. Uh, the food that was given him. Mm. No, uh, my wife would, would never do that. She's a Christian. We are both Christians. You Can believe that she's an innocent woman? And no, no. Innocent. She, will, she would never, never, never poison me. If anything, we used to eat, to eat together with Emerson, the food she cooked. You see, they have tried to. Uh, you know, tarnish my wife, even to the extent of saying the degree which she got and she got after hard working. I, I, we used to go through her papers, and I, I think you can count on me to know what is good, a good paper, and what is a bad paper. Right. And, 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 uh, I think I must ask you one final question before I, I, I finish. You're the man who liberated this country. You led it for 37 that years. Is, yes. What is it that you regret? What is it that you want to happen for Zimbabwe next? And do you think you could be the president again? No. And the last part, no. I don't want to be the president of the Nanga. Of course. I'm now 94. You see, I perhaps look younger than yourself, but 
<laughs> but <laughs> but uh, age-wise, uh, no, I'm 94. But uh, no, even then, uh, no, I, I, I have had my, my time. Fine. I would have wanted to support Emerson's you know, bid, but through the party system. And the system that, 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 that we have, the party chooses you as a candidate, then as a candidate you must be voted for by, by the people. So you must go through the election process, which he hasn't done at all. And, uh, you know, after working for so many years with him, I didn't think he would be a ma the man to reject uh, the election process. A lot of people will say it's rich for you, who has allegedly stolen elections, to criticise your successor for not being a Democrat when he is promising free and fair elections. Promising fear web, a promise is not the reality. It's just a promise. Fine. If he's, he's promising, at least it's a good start. And I'm prepared to join him in making the pro process, the promise, a reality. What do you think Britain should do now? We're trying to help the new dispensation. Do you think the colonial power should? Get yes, sure. Help where they can. I think he has already appealed uh, to Britain to assist. And if Britain is forthcoming, well and good. It, it, it will help our people generally. But we must be on uh, proper tracks. Get back to constitutional knowledge. <laughs>